Nissan. They're freaking awesome. The Silvia, the Z, the GTR. But what about the legendary model that really started it all? The poor man's BMW blew everyone away with its unique lightweight style, monocoque design and unibody construction. Here's everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Datsun 510. In 1914, Kaishinsha Motor Car Works introduced its first car, the Dot. But the country wasn't quite ready for a passenger car manufacturer, and the company struggled for about a decade and almost went out of business in the mid-20s. I struggled for most of the 90s to get my boy band off the ground. To all the former members of Boy Talk, hit me up. I think it's time for a reunion tour. To stay afloat, they merged with Jitsuyo Motors and became Dot Automobile Manufacturing Co. In 1930, Dot Auto got a big boost from the government, who declared that cars with engines below 500 cc's could be driven without a license. Dot developed a car just under that amount of cc's and called it a Dotson, or Son of Dot. If you're a son of Dot, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Back to the story. Four years later, a new company had formed, Nissan, and they wanted to take over struggling. Please remain on the line. We value your call. And they wanted to take over Kashinsha's business. Now it fell to Nissan to start cranking out Datsan. It was well on its way to car making success when a little thing called World War II happened. You ever heard of it? Nissan's passenger car production stalled and it refocused its energies on building trucks for the Imperial Army. After the war, Nissan's passenger car production ramped up again. And in 1947, they joined forces with British car maker Austin. Hi, Austin. Their first collab came in 1958 with the Datsun L210 Bluebird, which did nothing for American car buyers. It was a little bit too small and too British. In comparison, its main competitor, the Volkswagen Beetle, was a lighter car with the same horsepower, give or take a pony. Given the option, I would take a pony. And then I'd eat it. And speaking of ponies, the Datsun L210 Bluebird actually drove like one. It had bad brakes, its ride was bumpy, and it shook like crazy, just like Michael J. Fox. Sure, it wasn't all bad, it got great gas mileage, but this was the 50s. Gas was like 30 cents a gallon, and nobody really worried about fuel economy. Nissan's designers went back to the drawing board, and in 1959 dropped the Datsun Bluebird P310. The P310 was larger, with a roomier interior, updated styling and independent front suspension, which was a monumental innovation at the time. In 1960, 20,000 units were shipped to the US. The Bluebird performed a little better, but the car was still deemed too English for American tastes, like blood pudding. Then, President of Nissan, Yutaka Karayama, wanted to change all that. Mr. K had faith in his company and its products and believed, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that his company could build a car that US buyers didn't just settle for, but really wanted. Mr. K was Nissan's outspoken wild car, which earned him a bad rep among company execs. Your boy can relate, mon cher. <laughs> So they sent him to Los Angeles in 1960 because they wanted him to get the hell out of Tokyo. It turned out to be the perfect timing because Nissan's agreement with Austin expired that same year, giving Mr. K, if you're nasty, a clean slate with which to do his damn thing. Nissan's next release was the 410 Bluebird. And while it was an improvement on the 310, Nissan still wasn't there yet, as far as Mr. K was concerned. Some say Mr. K was too much of a rebel, but he was a rebel with a cause. He was Japanese James Dean, facing an uphill battle, convincing Nissan that American car owners were a different breed and wouldn't respond to the genteel way models were named in Japan. Bluebird and Fair Lady wouldn't cut it anymore. After a lot of pushing and prodding, he saw to it that Nissan would only use numerical code names for the US market. He also insisted on a design change for the next line of Datsuns, the 510. Nissan designer Teruro Uchino, Ichino. Turo Uchino, Ichino. <laughs> Go back. Turo Uchino was tasked with creating a car that looked less Italian or British than its predecessors and had its own unique flavor. Jessica. He drew up a design that was efficient, clean, and kind of American looking. The only carryover from the 410 was its side crease or supersonic line. 
While Nissan execs agreed on the name and design changes, they put their foot down on the car's engine size. Although rival Toyota was offering a 1.9 liter engine in its largest American model, Datsun's capped out at 1.4 liters. Mr. K did have one ally in his corner, company exec Kaichi Matsumura, who also thought the engine should be bigger. And with the help of newly acquired automaker Prince, which you might remember from our GTR episode, they approved the creation of a 1.6 liter engine. Hey, two tenths of a liter more is better than nothing. And the Datsun 510 made its US debut in 1967, just like my dad. This was a car Katayama was passionate about and he believed in it so much that he required all employees from the executives to the guys working in the cafeteria to take the new car for a spin just to prove his point. Uh, can anybody guess what happened? Yes. They hated it? Wrong! They freaking loved it! Oh! The 1.6 liter four cylinder engine produced a claimed 96 horsepower and 99.8 torques. And it went from zero to 60 in 13 seconds, reaching a top speed of about a hundo. Americans bought about 45,000 510s in its first year. And by the end of its run in 1973, Nissan sold an incredible 400,000 510s worldwide. The world finally saw what Mr. K had envisioned from the get-go. It was an instant classic from the day it rolled off the assembly line and the choice for those wanting a bit of a sports car in their daily drive. Plus, Cool Hand Luke had one. Oh, the salad dressing guy? We release a new video every day. To make sure you don't miss any of them, hit this subscribe button. And to make double sure you don't miss them, hit the notification bell. Ding, ding. You like Nissans? Check out this episode of Up to Speed. You like cops? You don't like cops? Check out this episode of Wheelhouse. It's donut season. We got a ton of new shows coming this summer. Again, subscribe. I love you.